Well, um, found out maybe, I don't know, about an hour before the game. Uh, on one hand, it surprised me. Uh, on the other hand, you know, this is – this is what this is what we have to. I mean, this is what you have to kind of expect this to happen. It, we hate for it to happen. We hope for the best, but don't know the next step. I really don't know. I just, I mean, like I said, we found out an hour before the game. We were scrambling, um, and we just got off the court. I don't know what this means. I don't know. Is it just tonight? I'm sure we know more. Uh, when the NBA gives us uh, the next step to do. Ava. Scott, that being said, what are your takeaways from what your kind of younger, less experienced group put together tonight? Well, I, I mean, you hate the, you hate the, the, to lose the game, but um, our, our, our young players are players that haven't had a lot of experience. And, and then our, you know, Danny, I mean, those are, those guys um, got a little bit better today. Uh, they competed. This is the championship level team that we played against. Uh, that's full. They got their entire squad and they're ready and they're, they're ready to make another run. Uh, but I thought our guys competed, you know, they were on, they were on fire. I mean, we, we haven't been great defensively. But they were making those first, you know, that first quarter. They made nine threes out of out of twelve, and they were hitting them from all over the all over the floor. But our guys, I thought our guys competed. You know, we and then in the third quarter, we knew we knew that they were going to step up. That's what veterans teams do when they know teams are down, down in men. But I thought we we battled back and made it a interesting game at the end. But couldn't score in that third quarter. Like I said, our guys. We've had a tough, you know, it was a tough night with, with also uh, Thomas Bryant and then having no Brad is, and then no Russell, but we still battled and played against uh, one of the best teams down to the wire. And do you have any status update on Thomas's injury? They said it was a left knee. Yeah, left knee. Yeah, have an MRI tomorrow. Uh, we hope for the best. Uh, don't know as of right now. He's definitely, he's, he's in pain. Um, but, you know, we hope for the best. I just know one thing about TB. He, he's a great kid that works hard. He get, plays with passion. He gives you everything he has. And, and hopefully it's nothing serious and he can be back soon, I'm sure. We'll know, we'll know more tomorrow. Fred. Yes, Scott, I'm, I'm just wondering if – Obviously, injuries are just a part of the game and they happen with any season. But the stuff with, you know, like a guy being ruled out with health and safety protocols last second is is obviously so new. Does does all of this happening around the league with Philly, with Boston and, and now with you guys, does it does it affect the way that you look at the season or, or the way I guess that you evaluate teams and that kind of stuff? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know how you can because you can't predict it. It's unpredictable. We're going to always try to do. We're going to do all the things that we're, we're we we need to do. You know, the social distancing, the hygiene, the the mask, uh, the Zoom calls, uh, uh, limited. You know, no shoot arounds. Just trying to trying to keep our guys uh, and our staff and our families. It's important to keep everybody healthy. This is a serious thing. It's not a. It's. Um, we, we all need, it's a world problem. We all need to get by it. And we can't, I can't predict, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, the next game or whatever is going on in the team. I just know we have to do what we need to do and, and, and keep ourselves as safe as possible. And there's no guarantees. I mean, we've been testing negative and as Ted would say, we're test negative, stay positive. And, and a couple of guys, obviously, just because of the situation, who haven't quite been in the rotation, Garrison and, and Troy ended up playing rotation minutes tonight. What, what did you see from the two of them? Well, I mean, that's always, it's always a, it's a silver lining. Everybody gets an opportunity. And a lot of guys got major minutes tonight. Uh, I, thought, I thought Garrison plays with a tenacity and an effort and a, and a, like a, a joy of competition that that I love. 
and he's, he can make shots. He, I think he, I thought he got fouled a couple of times and he didn't get those calls that the other guys can get. Um, but those, he's just, I just told him on the court, play through it, um, gain the respect by playing hard. Uh, Troy, you know, he didn't have a good first half. It was pretty much um, flat, but he came back in the second half, played better, made a couple of shots. When you see it, when you see the basket go in, you feel a little bit better about yourself, but Thought they, I thought they both played played pretty good. Neil. Hey, Scott. Uh, obviously, Denny had those three uh, threes at the end there to, you know, kind of build up his stat line a little bit. What would you see from him after, you know, he was having a few games of a tough stretch? Yeah, he's had a tough stretch. Uh, not just – I mean, it's part of growing up. And the guy just turned 20 last week. And it's the growing pains. I got to be patient. I got to help him through it. He has to understand that he's going to have to go through it. Um, but you got to enjoy the process of going through it. Uh, it's tough. Trust me. I've been there before. There's a lot of nights you don't sleep and you're mad and you're disgusted in yourself. But you got to come back the next day and figure out how to get a little bit better. And that's what every young player has to go through. You just got to come back a little bit better every day and, and understand that you're good enough to be in this league and you're going to have um, brighter days ahead. And, and that's what he's been doing. You know, he hasn't played well in the last few, three or two or three games uh, or two games. And then he came back better tonight and built on it. He has a, another opportunity Monday uh, against Phoenix. And then, then he has another one against Utah and another one against Detroit and then another one against Cleveland. And then another one against Cleveland. And then he goes probably to Charlotte. And then he goes to Milwaukee. You want me to keep going? San Antonio, maybe Houston, New Orleans. All right, guys, have a good night. Be safe. And they, they do a good job of getting us ready. You know, like the guys that aren't, you know, necessarily getting enough minutes playing, you know, when we're practicing, we're playing five on five, three on three, two on two, stuff like that. So it, it, it helps to stay ready, and then you know, a lot of the guys they help you stay into it. When you're when you're locked in on the bench, you're cheering your teammates and stuff. It helps you kind of mentally stay engaged, and and the coaches do a lot of other things as well. You know, sending you film stuff like that. So it makes you kind of stay engaged and doesn't let you you know get mentally out of it. And how much can you affect the game? Um, like last night, uh, Scott described everybody. You said everybody was a little bit downtrodden, and you came in with Ish and really kind of lifted everybody with just your attitude. How much can you impact the game with just energy stuff like that as well? I don't know if it was necessarily me that, you know, brought to live. You know, me and, you know, me and Mo have been sitting, you know, for a long time. And we knew, like, my, my job is to play hard. It's as simple as that. So go in there and play as hard as I can, you know, knock down open shots. My shots are going to fall. Sometimes they are, sometimes they won't. But one thing I can control is how hard I play. And that's one thing that I won't let get away from me is how hard I play because that's my job and, and I'm gonna try to do that every night to the best of my ability so especially when you got you got Ish flying up the court it makes it easier for me you got Mo, Mo plays hard too I mean and then you got you got Brad of it I mean it made my job easy the other night or last night when Brad was sending all those shots I mean he had 40 or whatever so I didn't really have to do much but play hard so yeah. thanks Garrison Fred hey man um when you find out that Brad's not playing tonight, is that kind of your sign? Like, all right, I, I know I've got a heavy amount of minutes tonight. Does that change your mentality going in at all? No, not really. It was kind of a shock, but it not really mentality. Like, I, whether he's out or whoever's out, my job stays the same, is to play hard and to knock down open shots. It's I'm never going to get out of my game to, you know, ever try to break anybody off or get out of my comfort zone of just, you know, coming off screens and playing hard. It's, it doesn't, my job is, my role is simple. And that's what I focus on every night, whether, you know, whoever's out and whoever's playing, it, it doesn't matter. My role doesn't change. And, and Brad, Brad being out with, with contact tracing, does that, like, how does the team react to that? Does that, because this is the first time where like the reality of the world has affected you guys directly. And it's obviously had effects on the rest of the team, the, the league a lot. But like, how does the team react to that news in the moment? I mean, it was it was a shock. I mean, I don't I don't know the, all the protocols and everything. I just know it was a it was a shock. But you know, the game still we're still playing, 
So, you know, we got to quickly lock back in to figure out what we're doing for the night. So it's we can't dwell on it as much as we would love to have Brad out there. We can't dwell on it because we had a game. We found out and, you know, we got to play the game. So. Ace. Hey, Garrison. Um, what's kind of the vibe on the team right now as you guys await news on Thomas Bryant? Obviously, um, you know, he went down early in this game and had to leave. Uh, you know, I, there's nothing I can say on that other than I'm praying for him, you know, wish him nothing but the best. I think he's going to, I don't know. I don't know the situation or what's going on with it. Um, I know I was sitting there watching and I, I, I can't really say anything about that because I don't really know. Neil. Hey, Garrison. Um, obviously, last year, you also had a big game against Miami. Is it something specifically about that team that, you know, you're uh, able to get off, pop off, or is it just a matter of getting the opportunity? Um, well, we know that they're a hard pulling team. Um, you know, we said that in scout. They're a hard pulling team. They protect the paint. So that means there's opportunities to be had on the three-point line. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a team. I try to do as best I can with every opportunity I get. And it just so happens that it was the heat both nights that I got those opportunities. So, uh, Yeah, that was rough. Um, obviously, what, what we hear is dictated by NBA protocol. Um, but Brad's a huge part of what we do. So we, we, we always want to have him on the floor. That said, um, the rest of the guys on the team, we all know we got to step up. We got to play a little harder, work a little harder. And Scott Brooks has said um, to us a couple of times that you guys on the second unit are still looking for a little bit of rhythm or to get into a groove of some sort. How do you think you guys did tonight with that extra pressure added on of missing so many starters already? I think a lot of guys stepped up. Um, they stepped up, they play hard, and I think I love seeing the aggressiveness out of a lot of guys, Garrison, Mo, Denny. I love seeing, um, seeing them make quick decisions. Fred? R Robin, can you, can you elaborate a little bit on that? When you say aggressiveness and quick decisions, what, what stuff are you specifically referring to? I think what was great was um, I think for the majority of the game, we didn't hesitate on offense. We kept the ball moving. Um, when we saw a sh when we saw our, our opportunity, I think guys took it like if they saw they had their shot, they, they took that shot. Sometimes you're not going to get a better one, and it, it hurts the offense if you hesitate or if you pass the ball when it's your moment to put it up. And, and I, I, I know I've only covered you for this season, but I feel like I've seen you been wearing that same hat for years. I just got to know how old that hat is. <laughs> um, this one, this one's a few years old. I wish Jimmy was still here. Jimmy would, Jimmy would be able to tell. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's five years at the youngest. Eva, do you have another question? Yeah, I am sorry. It's not about your hat. Um, but Robin, I'm just wondering kind of what you're making of this weird season across the league so far. Obviously, you're seeing so many guys out, but you're also, even before then, we were seeing a bunch of blowouts and just like weirdness happening. I'm wondering how you're processing that. Um, it's certainly, uh, I think, a weird year for everybody in and out of the league. I think it's, it's, it's great that we have, I think, so many guys on our roster that can step up. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that guys are getting knocked by the protocol, but that's, that, that's kind of the, the nature of the NBA. If uh, somebody's out, the next guy steps up. Chase? Yeah, uh, Robin, just your thoughts on Thomas Bryant going down with that injury as you guys obviously await the news. TB is a huge part of what we do on both ends of the floor, and he's been, he's been playing – He's been playing big for us. He's been playing big for us. Um, I hope you know. I hope everything turns out okay. I'm, I'm not sure what the status is right now, but we love having him on the floor. I love. I love playing with him. Hope he's okay. I mean, actually, it was crazy. Uh, it was right really before, literally before the. I think we started meeting. I was getting the treatment, and then he came up and said, you know, "He can't play tonight." I'm like, "What?" 
saying the whole whatever NBA protocol, like the rules or whatever. And you know, but it's it's actually like NBA is very serious about this, you know. Um we all want to finish the season and then, you know, I mean I guess the, they decided. So it is what it is. But you know, and then after that he told me, you know, I gotta be so aggressive tonight and yeah, that's what happened. Does does Brad being out just for contact tracing for such a kind of just small interaction, does that make does that do you keep that in mind? Is that something where you're like, I gotta be super cautious now? Say that again? With Brad having to sit out with something that was just kind of a small interaction, do you feel like it's kind of a, a wake up call where everybody has to be super cautious now? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, like I said, NBA is really serious about this thing. You know, um, we got to be like, we have to put masks on the bench and stuff, um, those kind of stuff. And we got to follow the rules and then, you know, and then literally, and then we, we have to be ready, you know, like anytime, you know, who knows, like, you know, someone get injured or someone get, you know, like today, uh, Brad just like, you know, got cold and uh, he can't play like right before, literally right before the game. So someone got to step up and then be ready every night, you know, 